So if you watched the previous video when we did the PS2 Classic with that really powerful mini PC by Geekcom, and if you haven't seen that video yet, go click up there somewhere and check it out. Get yourself up to speed with what we're going to be doing next. Now at the end of the PS2 Classic video, I did mention that I will be doing a different version that would use a more affordable Raspberry Pi 5, but it would still play PS2 games. Obviously, nowhere near the sort of resolution and performance that you're going to get out of the mini PC, but I do get that not everyone has that amount of money that they can spend to build one of these PS2 classics. So in this video, yes, we're going to be building the PS2 Classic Pi 5 edition, and we're going to print the case slightly different because of course there's so much choice when it comes to color with 3D printing. So we're going to take the original case with the RGB and there's only one thing we're going to change and that's the back plate because it's going to have a tray that houses the Raspberry Pi 5 and then you're just going to slide it in to all the other parts are going to be exactly the same. So I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll jump on over to Fusion 360 and have a look at that new backplate that I designed and of course I will add it to the PS2 Classic Maker World link which is going to be in the description below. Right, let's go over to Fusion 360 now and have a look at the new backplate design. So this is the old backplate with that big rectangular hole which obviously shows all the I.O. from the mini PC. Now this is the new backplate for the Raspberry Pi 5. As you can see, there's a lot smaller hole because all we need access to is the two HDMI ports and the USB-C. If we have a look at the other side, we can see the mounting for the Raspberry Pi itself. And it's just a little tray that comes off the back. It's super easy to print. And it's the only part that's different from the original. So it's time to set up the printer and get one printed out. Plus, we're going to print all the parts again as well. So we're going to end up with two PS2 classics, the mini PC version and of course the Pi 5 version. Now, of course, we are going to have RGB just like we had with the other case. So let me go over the components we need for the RGB. Obviously, we've got our Raspberry Pi 5 that I'll put a heatsink and fan on. And then, of course, the only other thing we need is a USB-A to two USB female ports and that's going to be those two USB at the front. So enough waffling on, let's jump on over to the top down camera and have a look at all the components we're going to need. And of course we're going to start off with that back plate and we've already got the Raspberry Pi 5 installed. So we printed the rest off and we've printed it in this really nice blue carbon fiber. And then we've added the carbon fiber effect. So I decided to use bronze, copper, silk just to do the details. I think it sets it off nice. So just like we did with the mini PC version, we're going to be using an ESP32 that's got WLED loaded onto it. And then we're going to use three LED light strips with NeoPixels. And of course, we got a package from JLC3DP. Now, I no longer have a resin printer. I did have the Allegro Saturn 3, but resin printers are messy, smelly, and I just can't be dealing with all that. So the best option is to get JLC 3DP to print it. So we got these printed in 8001 transparent resin with an oil spray. And I'll be honest, it looks like glass. So light is just going to go straight through this and shine exactly where we want it to. So we're going to have RGB, of course, and we're going to have the PS2 logo light up and then there's going to be a discrete light bar at the front. So, of course, this video is sponsored by JLC 3DP. They will bring your ideas to life in their state of the art facility. Their experts are always on hand if you have any issues. They're fast, reliable and they're very competitive on pricing. So I guess the best thing to do is to show you how easy it is to order. So let's jump on over to the JLC website and order the parts we need for this project. 
So click on quote now and then drag and drop those STL files and give it a few seconds to load up. As you can see, we've got the LED light bar and then the PS2 logo. So we're going to be selecting 8001 resin, transparent, oil spraying, and then just set it to a plastic enclosure. This doesn't really matter too much. As you can see, $3.33 for the light bar. And then again, 8001 resin, transparent, oil sprayed, just plastic enclosure. This is $4.16. So bringing the total to just $7.49. Absolute bargain. So for more information and the latest offers, click the link in the description below. So thanks again to JLC for sponsoring this video and all the other videos. I just wouldn't be able to make these really cool projects without them. So I guess it's that fun time again where we do some soldering and we basically just get all this case put together. Now we've got a cutting mat, leaded solder, we've got some wire, we've got some flux, we've got tip cleaner, we have our soldering iron and I'll, I'll put a few links in the description below to some of the equipment I use. We got some wire snips and that's about all we need. So we're going to speed through some of this footage. We're just going to solder some wires onto the LED strips. Now I am going to show you a really cool tip here and it's basically for the wire. So we're snipping off three lengths of wire here and we need to tin the ends of the wires. And what I do is I put a little bit of flux on the end of the wires because I don't like using snips to actually snip the wire off. So we've got the free wires. We've got some flux on there, as you can see. We're gonna take some leaded solder. We're gonna melt a decent sized blob on there. Not too much, because it will drip off. And then we're just gonna touch the end of each wire. And as you can see, it will perfectly expose the right amount of wire so we can then solder to the leds or if it's the esp32 for example this is just a really cool tip that i've sort of found out from friends and other people in the community lots of little tips like i said in the other video if you do want me to do a dedicated video on soldering just all the stuff that i've learned then let me know in the comments below as you can see, the LEDs are working. I've renamed it. I'm just using the WLED app, setting it up to sort of light up all the rest of the LEDs, cutting more wire. And then of course, you can see that I'm doing it exactly the same way again. Flux on the wire, big blob of solder, and then just soldering it all on. So as I said before, there's gonna be three LED light strips, one for the bar and then two to go at the top and the bottom of that resin ps2 logo as you can see we've got all the strips working now and i'm just segmenting them off so we can control each strip individually even though they're all connected on a single line and as you can see we, it's just going to look amazing so if we flip it around we can see the ps2 logo lights up really nice so of course we're going to have to get everything put in together so we're going to put the led light bar in first we'll peel off the backing of that strip and then these other two strips i think what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to glue them basically facing inwards it's going to be the easiest way to do it and it's just going to hold it really secure so just a couple of the leds three in total actually on this side we use the activator and then we can just stick them on. And then on the other one, I put a few more dots on there. Use the activator again. And that activator stuff is really good. So next, we're just gonna put the other components in. And when I say other components, I mean this USB extension cable. That's pretty much it. That's all we need. We can put that in, slide on the top. Then we plug that in to the Raspberry Pi 5 for the ESP32 and then we chuck it in there. It's nice and easy to get everything to fit because there's not much in there compared to the mini PC. And apart from those screws that we need to put on the back, that's it. So let's plug it in for one last time just to make sure that all the LEDs light up. So we got this USB-C cable with a switch on it, pretty much standard for Raspberry Pis. And as we can see, everything lights up. It all works perfect. So I guess the next thing is we need to get some software on this. 
Now, of course, because there is a lot less going into the case, it's a lot easier to put together. So now we've got the PS2 Classic Pi 5 Edition all put together. I think the best thing to do now is go over the operating system and how I got it on here. Now, of course, I did use a Samsung T7 one terabyte external SSD and then connect it to one of those USB ports on the front. And the reason I did this is because I've got one terabyte of storage and I don't actually have any SD cards big enough to fit the Arcade Punks image. Now, if you don't know who Arcade Punks are, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. But basically what they do is they offer pre-made images so all you got to do is download the image file and then flash it to whatever storage device, whether it's a USB stick or of course an SD card. It's going to have everything set up for you already. So let's have a quick look at the image that we're going to be using in this video. And of course, then it's time to play some games. So here we are on the Arcade Punks website. As you can see, they've got images for all different types of Raspberry Pis and they do them for the Playstations and Nintendos and all sorts of stuff. Single board computers, etc, etc. But we're looking for one for the Raspberry Pi 5. So you can select it from the drop down menu. They've got all the different Raspberry Pis here. And if we scroll down, let's see if I can find. Yep, here it is. So this is the one that we're going to be using for this video. Now, of course, that 512 gigabytes, that's not just PS2 games. There's all sorts of systems ranging from Atari to Nintendo and Sony, etc., like PSP, PS1. Now, once you've downloaded that image, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi imaging tool. Make sure you select Raspberry Pi 5. For OS, we're going to go to Use Custom and then just go to that IMG file that you downloaded before. So that's our image file. Select that and click open and then all we need to do is select the destination now of course I'm going to be using a Samsung T7 external SSD just because I don't have an SD card that size to hand now it really is a case of just plugging that SD card or external USB drive into the Raspberry Pi and then it's just going to boot up into the software you'll configure the controller and then you just go into the options and start playing games. Now, I actually tested five games in total. I'm not going to go through which games they are. You can pretty much see we've got Crash Bandicoot, Auto Ballista, and there's a few other games. Now, I don't have any stats on the screen because I dare say it's not running at full 60 FPS. I'll tell you that much. But the main takeaway here is the games are playable. They look half decent. And you've got to remember, we're playing these on a $60 single board computer that's the size of a credit card. So Raspberry Pis have come a long way and I can't wait till they release the Pi 6. So what's the catch? Why would you use a more expensive Mini Geek on PC over the Raspberry Pi 5? Well, of course, it does come down to performance because I'm pretty sure that the Geek on Mini PC would be able to emulate PS3 and other systems with similar specs. Now the Raspberry Pi 5 can do PS2 emulation, but I'm not saying it's going to work with every game. And of course, you're going to be running a lot lower resolution and you might get a little bit of stutters here and there. But the main takeaway here is actually playable and quite enjoyable. Now, of course, everything is in the description below where you can buy a Raspberry Pi 5, where all the files are. Now, of course, I will update the Maker World link to include the backplate for the Pi 5. So you get it all in one place. Now, of course, you could print it out with the Raspberry Pi 5, maybe use the Raspberry Pi 5 one for a bit. And then, of course, if you do decide to get the Geekcon Mini PC, which I highly recommend, all you need to do is reprint the backplate and that is it. Everything will go together, just like you've seen in the previous video. Now, of course, if you've got any questions, comments, criticisms, you know what to do by now. Put it in the comments below and I'll answer as many people as I can. I do have a Discord server, also linked below. So if you need any help with this project or any other project that we've covered in my videos, you can go there, chat with me and I'll be able to help you out. 
So that about wraps it up for this video. The PS2 Classic Project was amazing fun and it was really cool that we had two different versions, one with the mini PC and of course one with the more affordable Raspberry Pi 5. Now of course if you do enjoy my content I'd be really grateful if you could like, subscribe and then hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. I've got some cool ones coming up and as you're at the end of this video I'll let you into a little secret. I'm going to be making a stream deck that's stream deck not steam deck so a stream deck is one of those little keypads little screens you can program it okay they're quite expensive they're about 150 pounds or 150 dollars but I'm going to make my own that's way better for a third of the price and yes it has RGB so that wraps it up for this video I'm JP and as always I hope to see you in the next one.